Umsum sat on a park bench with a candy in his hand. The moment he popped it into his mouth, his face lit up with delight. The sugary sweetness made him curious. He wondered, why does sugar taste sweet? Determined to find out, he shrank and entered his own mouth. Inside, he landed on the tongue's surface with tiny sugar crystals melting on it. As he looked around, Um Sum noticed huh? hundreds of tiny dome-shaped structures called taste buds scattered all over. Um Sum climbed onto one of the taste buds and watched the sugary liquid seep into it. The sugar molecules reached the special receptor cells inside the dome. Each of these cells had microscopic hair-like structures called taste hairs, waving like antennas. When the sugar molecules touched them, the receptor cells sent electrical messages through nearby nerves. Umsum followed the signals as they zipped away through a glowing tunnel of nerve fibers, racing toward the brain. The brain instantly recognized this signal as sweet. Umsum watched as the brain responded by releasing a wave of pleasant chemicals called dopamine making him feel happy and satisfied. The sweetness wasn't just a flavor. It was the brain's way of rewarding the body for finding energy-rich food. Smiling proudly, Umsum now understood the mystery. Umsum was resting on the couch when he began to feel strange. His body was warm, his head heavy, and tiny shivers ran down his back. When he checked his temperature, it was higher than normal. He had a fever. Curious, he wondered, why do we get fever? Determined to find out, Um Sum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the bloodstream, where everything huh? seemed chaotic. White blood cells were rushing around like brave soldiers, and tiny invaders called bacteria and viruses were floating everywhere. Um Sum followed the white blood cells as they surrounded the intruders. They released special chemical messengers called pyrogens into the blood. Umsum followed the pyrogens as they traveled upward toward the brain. Deep inside, he reached the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that controlled body temperature. Normally, the hypothalamus kept the body around 37 degrees Celsius, but the pyrogens whispered a new instruction to raise the temperature. Instantly, the hypothalamus began its work. Blood vessels near the skin started narrowing to trap heat inside. Muscles began to shiver, creating warmth from movement. Umsum could feel the body heating up like a furnace. He realized the fever wasn't just a problem, it was part of the solution. The higher temperature made it harder for the invading germs to survive and multiply. Leaping back outside, Umsum smiled proudly. Umsum was sitting quietly on a bench when suddenly a strange sound echoed from his belly. Huh? Shocked, he wondered, why does our stomach growl? Determined to find out, he shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the stomach. The place looked almost empty, with only thin traces of food clinging to the walls. Around him, large muscles formed thick folds. Huh? and they were beginning to move restlessly. Umsum watched as they tightened and relaxed, pushing the space into motion. Suddenly, the brain commanded the stomach to get ready for food. The walls obeyed. They squeezed and churned strongly, just like they did after a meal. Umsum stumbled as the powerful muscles rippled around him, shaking the empty chamber. Air and leftover digestive juices sloshed together noisily, creating echoes that bounced from wall to wall. Omsum covered his ears as the growls rumbled all around him. He followed the vibrations downward and saw the small intestine also joining in. The walls of the intestine pushed and squeezed, sending ripples forward. This process, called peristalsis, was the body's way of moving food along. But with no food present, it only pushed air and liquid, creating even more rumbling noises. Amsum finally understood the reason. The body was basically preparing itself for food. With a gentle leap, Amsum came out of his body, smiling proudly.